As Your Heart Betrays You, Part 32, a Miraculous Ladybug fanfiction written and narrated by Mira Rose, with artwork for the opening and thumbnail image by Evenart Adam on Instagram and Tumblr. I will have them linked in the description box. If you haven't already, don't forget to enjoy the previous 31 parts of this story, which are also linked in the description box. As long as we're spending time together, don't forget to hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. If you aren't sure what to comment, put Plagues of Blueberries. Please enjoy As Your Heart Betrays You, Part 32. Adrian Agrest, 23 years old somewhere on the coast of northern France. If Adrian could describe his mood, he'd use the word jubilee. It felt like the seventh year of Shmita and his emotional debts were forgiven. He simply let himself go, not bothering to harvest off parts of himself to his regular masking and routines. No. He got to walk away with lessons learned and forbade himself from work. For the first time, perhaps ever, Adrian both allowed himself to rest and found himself able to rest. You ready to call Ladybug? Plague asked. Are you ready to admit you like blueberries? Adrian shot back. Nuru sat quietly, sipping on leftover honey tea as they watched their master and buddy go back and forth. Berries were in full bloom now, evidence of Adrian's cultivation and care, and Plague started making a stink whenever he didn't get to pair his camembert with blueberries or raspberries. I don't like them, they just accent the palate. There's no need to call. If she wanted to find me, she would. You guys just keep breaking each other's hearts. And you keep insisting you hate fruit. Adrian went back to weeding. Nobody told him to plant mint separately, and it'd taken over some of his boxes. Come on, help with the rent. Grumbling, Plague finished his cheese then joined him to help with the mint infestation. Nuru joined after they were finished with the honey tea. It was going to be a lazy seaside afternoon, but plans change when a face pops through your avocado trees. Marinette? There she was, with a wrinkled collar and a beach bag, staring up at him as he watered the balcony of plants. Had she rung the doorbell or gone straight to the back? Then again, he probably didn't hear the bell even if she rang it, which begs the question of if anyone else had ever happened upon him talking to Kwamis. Adrian Agrest! she yelled. Marinette! Adrian Agrest! Marinette, hold, hold on! He wrestled with the hose, wondering where he could set it down without walking all the way back to the spout. It's hot out here. Come inside. Adrian Agrest! Were they going to keep doing this? Yelling back and forth until one of them passed out? There were better options, but Gremlin Brain took over, and Adrian listened to it. When she went to call out his name again, he sprayed her with the hose. Stop yelling, he sighed, lowering the stream of water to an avocado tree instead of her chest. You're disturbing the neighborhood, and perhaps the security of his identity. Adrian! He took another shot at her with the hose before she could continue. Ten minutes later, Marinette sat at his dining room table, dressed in dry clothes as the kettle whistled. If you're here for my miraculous, I'm not giving them to you, Adrian said, spooning leaves into a pot. 
Plague and Nuru sat on the counter, looking between the humans. He stood with his back to her, and knew she sat and studied the wood grain of the table. I'm not here for them. So, why are you here? To apologize. He spun around. What was that? Marinette looked to the wall. I'm here to apologize. For... The kettle whistled. Smack-talking you in front of... You. That's what you want to apologize for? Adrian turned his back to her, knowing he owed at least three apologies as well, and grabbed the kettle. He poured as she debated her next sentence. And for leading you on. He blinked, the stream of steaming water interrupted as he transferred it from kettle to pot. Leading me on? Flirting with you and Cat Noir at the same time. Ah. Uh, that must have been confusing. I still am. Still am what? He turned to her. Confused. Ah. But I'm sorry, too. For? She made eye contact with him. Finally. Breaking up with you. She blinked, raising her eyebrows. Like, years ago? Yeah. Marinette looked at the table. Why'd you do it? Because I was in love with you. Um, <laughs> what? Her face twisted. Wait, so, like, that's why you date so many people? You break up with them if you get the feels? His laugh came out as a sigh. No, I... Um, this was embarrassing. I liked you. I really did. But then Ladybug told Cat Noir... He pressed a hand to his chest. She had a boyfriend, and it broke my heart. I realized it wasn't right of me to date you if hearing Ladybug had a boyfriend affected me that much, so... Adrian turned back to the pot, finishing off the kettle and putting it on the cold burner. You broke up with me because I told Kat I had a boyfriend. Yep. Wow. Yep. His ears burned. So, wait... He could hear her doing math. Did you... Did you ever stop liking me? He'd rather drink the pot of tea, steeping at a hundred degrees, than answer. No. No, I never did. He resigned himself to living with an ache for the rest of his life. I never did either. I see. It explained why she hated on him. If their relationship hadn't meant anything to her, she would have been indifferent. For both Cat Noir and Adrian Agrest. There had to be a limit for how many ways this woman could crack his heart. Because we're the same person? No. Because I've been charmed by both sides of you ever since, well, yeah, it was frustrating and confusing for me when I was younger, and... And you lost a lot of energy trying to talk yourself out of liking two different people. Marinette bit her lip. Yeah. Believe me. I understand. 
and now here we are. Here we are, he said, pulling out a set of cups and bringing them over with the pot. Tea? It's a tazan. That would be lovely. Thank you. They drank in silence, murmuring thanks to Nuru, who took it upon themselves to add honey to their cups. After draining his twice, Adrian tapped on the table, then looked at Marinette. He looked at his partner, with tea coating his throat like a film. What do? He had to break the membrane. What do you want from me, Marinette? Her cup was empty, too. Are we in love? His legs bounced. Is this what being in love feels like? No, I don't think it is. She licked her lips, then studied the ceiling beams. She always stared at the ceiling when she fought heartbreak. Or the media is lying to us. When has the media ever not lied about us? He had to correct himself. To us, I mean. Can we be in love? Well, that depends. Adrian leaned forward, resting his elbows on the table. What do you want from me, Marinette? Are you happy here? He looked at his balcony through patio doors. Yeah, I am. Would you be happier with me? In Paris? If I moved here. Words stopped moving in his brain at her response. You... what? I missed out on dating you twice because of misunderstandings. I think it's time I bring something to the table. You'd move here? Yes. For me? Yes. But... but you love Paris. You said nothing would ever get you to leave. And I also love you. The weight of the words struck him across the jaw leaving him aching and unable to respond. She loved him. The first time she said that, he thought she meant the idea of him. He thought she meant Cat Noir, singularly, separate from Adrian Agrest. But here she was, in front of Adrian Agrest, telling him she loved him. Telling him she'd move out of her city, their city, to be with him. Are you free Saturday? She blinked. Saturday? Yes, Saturday. I, uh, I can be. Why? Because if you're up for it, I'll take you on a date. Oh, a date. Uh, sorry. He stretched his arms out. Let me start over. That was bad. Marinette, will you go on a date with me this Saturday? Um... Her hesitation stabbed him in the neck like an unwanted kiss. Yes, I'd, uh... I... I'd like that. A lot. Good. Good. She scratched behind her ear. What is it? Huh? You're holding something back. Out with it. Oh, um, where? Where? The date. Here or... Oh, right, um, sorry. Paris. Yeah, Paris. I'll, um, I'll, I'll pick you up from your apartment. Oh, great, um, cool. Thanks. Yep. Silence breezed by them, and Adrian stood to close the window. Now what? 
It didn't feel right to have some kind of angsty, woe-is-me showdown, but it's not like they were about to curl up for a movie or something. I'll, uh, see you Saturday, Marinette said, standing and grabbing her purse. Come to think of it, how had she gotten here? Uh, right, yeah, uh, see you... She left through the patio before he could finish his goodbyes. Wow, Plag said, lounging underneath a blueberry bush with a rounded stomach. She just stole your clothes. That's... Adrian sighed. That was the least of his concerns. He had a date. They had a date. Adrian Acrest had a date with Marinette Dupang Chang. He wasn't sure how he got here, but it was a good place to start. At this point, they'd either date or be estranged forever. A fear itched his throat as his brain swam in its usual stretch of what-ifs and oh-nos. What if he loses his happiness? trying to be by her side again. No, he'd done first dates loads of times, and he'd been able to break things off when it didn't feel right almost as often. He could do this. It was an experiment. Yeah, an experiment. He finally healed his mind. Adrian wouldn't let his heart betray him. Thank you so much for listening. Part 33 is on the way. In the meantime, you can check out these other videos for more Miraculous Ladybug fanfiction, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!